Well, I've just got back from my first session of 2012 and I thought now would be a good time to do a quick summary of 2011 and, and show you all the fish I've caught last year. Um, I was going to try and do this on the bank but it was an absolute nightmare. The, the, the wind is ripping through that strong, it's 60 mile an hour gusts out there and the rain's coming in sideways and even trying to do some filming in the bivvy, the ambient noise of, of the rain and the wind hitting the bivvy was, was just too much. So I'm going to take this opportunity now to do it in here, this is my uh, this is my little fishing room, it's basically where I store all my gear and it's a bit of a hideaway from uh, from all the family when they do my head in. So uh, yeah, this is um, this is where I keep everything that I've got to do with fishing. Um, but if you can remember, this time last year, everywhere was frozen, so January was a complete write-off. I think there was um, something like 10 weeks of, of ice and frozen water, so I didn't get out fishing personally until uh, kind of middle of February time. But that first session was a fantastic session for me. Um, I was fishing down Christchurch Lakes in Oxfordshire and uh, putting a little bit of bait in. I was mainly using Maggot and, uh, and Boilie. The Boilie was uh, the experimental version of the Edge, you know, before it was on the market and I was still testing it. And uh, yeah, I had, I had a fantastic session, I had a nice winter brace. Uh, the first fish was a 36 pounder uh, mirror. It looked absolutely stunning in its winter colours, really rich colours to it, uh, which, was, which was very pleasing. And then after the 36, uh, I stayed on for an extra night and had a 39. That was an absolute stunning fish. I thought the 36 was good, the 39 was even better. Kind of a three quarter linear, um, real stunner called uh, Baby Paulers. Um, like I say, they were on the Maggiton Boily. A few weeks later, I was on a feature with uh, Advanced Car Fishing, and um, the, the weather was, was quite strange. It was like minus three at night, so there's frost at night, quite heavy frost at night and uh, the north easterly winds so it was bitterly cold but the sun was out during the day and the fish were kind of holding up right on the back of the wind and in the middle of the afternoon from up a tree I, I could see 30 or 40 fish just sitting there just off a reed bed just a foot or so under the surface um, so I had uh, fished a couple of zigs to them literally just under well I'll say a foot under the surface and uh, managed to pick a 33 up which was a, a, a cracking fish really um, and, uh, and very welcome for the time of year um, after that things changed a little bit, I found out my girlfriend was pregnant uh, back end of 2010 so we had to uh, we had to move house and I bought this place um, which pushed the mortgage up quite high and then I found out I was going to be made redundant which was an absolute uh, killer blow when you got a kid on the way and you got a new mortgage and everything. Um, so it, it kind of did affect my fishing. Um, so I had to take whatever job came my way and uh, I ended up doing a load of contract work in Leeds. Uh, in the same sort of field as what I was working before, in fact the same company, but it meant me doing a 180 mile round trip each day to, to go up to Leeds and back. I mean, I live in Derbyshire, so it's a, it's a long, long way, and I got, I got truly sick of the M1. Um, but the only fishing I could really do that time was, was on a local lake, um, a lake that I fished for 20 years previously. I'd not really fished it much in the past few years, just on socials, just to, just to catch up with my mates, but it was, it was kind of nice fishing with my mates again, you know. Um, and my brother, because I, I haven't fished with them really any, any sort of length of time um, since, well, oh, 10 years ago since I started travelling really for my fishing. Um, in that short space of time, I did manage to catch a few fish, which, which was nice. I think I did about, did about a dozen or so nights and um, ended up with, uh, I think, about 14 fish in the end. And I was, I was really pleased, really pleased with the results I was getting and the numbers I was getting. Um, one of them that I was really pleased with is a fish called George's. Uh, it's, a, it's a common and it's been in there for as long as I can remember. It's one of the, um, I won't say it's an original original, but it's, it's been in there for a very long time. Um, and it, uh, it weighed in at 31.14, which was my first 30 from the water. So after 20 years of fishing there, you know, it's, it's really nice to, to get my first 30 from the water. Um, I went on to catch a few more after that. Um, a fish called the Linea, which used to be one of the big ones in there, you know, 20 years ago. Um, but um, it's not really grown much since then, and it, it, I had a 24 pound, and I think it's been around that weight for for years and years. But it, it was a really good condition linear, and it's uh, it's it could have been from the original stocking back in the back in the mid 50s. I don't know, but I know it's been in there for a long, long time. So I was really pleased with that fish. A couple of other scaly fish I had, uh, and then towards the uh, towards the end of my time on there, I, I had another big common, well, the, the, the second biggest common which was a 31.4 I think he went and that was a that was a nice fish, it was a, again a really long common um, with it with a, well, it's, I'm going to say a strange head but it had a head a bit like a grass carp but uh, yeah, it was a nice fish and very very welcome. Well during the session when I had a 31 pound common 
I received a phone call to say I've been successful in a recent job interview, which was um, which was pretty good news really because it meant I didn't have to travel up to to Leeds anymore. I could start fishing the syndicate waters a bit further afield. I mean the job wasn't that interesting, but it was four on four off, which is fantastic for fishing. Um, so uh, as soon as I got a few days off together, I uh, travelled down to St Ives in Cambridgeshire, which was going to be my syndicate water for the year, and try and get the fat lady out there, which is uh, probably was the biggest fish in the country at the time. Um, on my first session down, uh, I, I really loved the place, it, it was fantastic, it's a mature pit, not many carp in there, uh, it does get pressured throughout the year but um, you know, I really started to get a feel for the place and uh, on that first session on my last morning I was lucky enough to see her on the bank and she looked absolutely stunning as well, I think she was 57 pounds and 10 ounces, you know in some of the photos I've seen obviously she looked quite disproportionate where she'd been quite gutty and uh, not look too nice but on the bank in in real life she was she looked cracking I mean yeah she's she's or well, she was a pretty much a chunky fish but uh, she didn't look she looked she looked stunning really uh, and I was really pleased to see her and that fired me up for the season ahead um, I did a couple more sessions after that I did a couple more nights after that um, but then my uh, then my son Sam was born so I had to spend a few more weeks at, uh, at home making sure he was okay in his, his, his first few weeks of life. Um, and when I was about ready to get back on the bank again, I received the news that the lady had died. So the footage you're, you're looking at now is, is the last time she was ever on the bank, you know, her last ever capture. It's a real shame because she was a good fish, but um, never mind, these things happen. You know, a lot of decent fish have died uh, in the last couple of years, which is, which is pretty sad, but um, hopefully some new ones will come through to take the place. Um, so it kind of left me a little bit stuck with where to fish for the year. You know, I, I, I put all my hopes on fishing that place, uh, but luckily I did get myself a backup water as well. Uh, I was intending to fish it more kind of winter time or when St Ives was really busy, um, but now it has to be main water. Um, it's a uh, it's a complex of lakes in the Neen Valley. It's these four lakes on the complex all together. Uh, I didn't know much about them when I joined, and I'd, I'd started fishing the car, the uh, car park lake for a first couple of nights. Um, had a couple of fish out, um, nothing huge, um, spawned out 28 was the biggest. Um, and then I started fishing the big lake because you know I kept hearing rumours of the big lake and the more I looked into it, the more I realised that the big lake probably had the better stamp of fish all in all. Um, so I started fishing the big lake. Um, first couple of sessions didn't go too bad, you know, I ended up with a nice a nice hit, uh, mainly from the surface. Uh, again live on a, on, a, on a feature for a magazine which is always nice. Uh, the biggest of those was a 32 pounder. Uh, so I was really fired up, really keen. The next few sessions that I did, I was picking up odd fish here and there, um, but I, I wasn't really having having hits that I was hoping to get. I mean, it was fishing quite tricky. It wasn't as easy a water as, uh, as what I thought it would be. Uh, but anyway, I was learning more about the water. I was baiting. I was getting the bait established, and uh, basically, I was just learning quite a lot about how to fish the place. And, and that kind of stood me in good stead a bit later on in the year, because uh, I think it was the Last week in August, I think what well, the last couple of days in August, um, I set up in a swim called the First Point, and I had my first uh, hit off the bottom of the year. So, I, you know, it's where everything kind of fell into place. You know, the, the spots I'd found previously, the bait I'd put in previously, everything came together, and I hooked six fish that session, uh, landing five of them. The best of them was it was a cracking um, 35 pound two ounce chunky common, real golden fish. So I, was, I was really really pleased to get that. You know, it's my first. Um, first mid 30 from the water and you know the first hit from the bottom so I thought I was really getting to places and over the next few weeks things went a bit mad down there for me uh, I think the fish just, just got onto my bait the edge and just, just went crackers on it, they just loved it for a, about a four week period um, because the next session I got down that the first point was taken so I dropped into the second point at the time the fish were spending a lot of time between the two points and each evening I'd, I'd see them crashing there but it was an area that's thick with weed and there's only a few little spots in there, uh, but from the second point I was able to cast in that rough direction and get a couple of baits um, near the sort of area where the fish were showing each night and that session I, again I hooked six fish, this time I only landed four of them, uh, lost a couple in the weed. Uh, again I had a, a 35 pound 2 ounce common, this time it was a fish called Baby Two Tone, uh, another cracking chunky common, uh, I think I had a, a, a 30 pound 10 ounce common as well that session so I was really starting to to get a few fish. The following week I'd booked a week's holiday from work and uh, once a year you're allowed to book um, seven nights on the, on the 
on the complex. I mean, I, I can't not really do that with a with a young kid. So I booked in five nights. So I thought it was a perfect time, and I, I must admit I couldn't have timed things better. Really, um, I uh, I hooked ten fish that session. Unbelievable, really. Um, lost three of them, unfortunately. Uh, one I lost off the surface. Um, one I lost in the weed, and another one I lost when I was playing it in. But the hook came out and landed in its peck, so I knew which fish it was. I think it was one I'd had two or three weeks previous as well, so I wasn't uh, particularly bothered. Um, but I did get my first 40 from the water, my first 40 of the year, uh, in, the, in the shape of the big mirror, which is a, a, a cracking big, dark looking fish. And uh, I was really, really pleased with that. It, it went 40 pounds on the nose, which I was really happy about. Yeah, I had a few other fish that session as well, uh, well along with the 40. Uh, there, was a, there was 27 common, which was a cracking looking fish and uh, well, probably the best looker uh, was it was a 28 linear I mean it's it's more the sort of fish you expect to see down on uh, on Lynch Hill you know rather than in the Neen Valley but um, yeah absolute cracking long lean linear and uh, I was really pleased with that session all in all. The following session down I couldn't get back into the swim so I had fish another swim again uh, and picked up a, a, another two fish um, one was a uh, mid double and the other was a, a 26 pounder so things were really starting to crack off for me there you know I was, I was I felt I was really on top of the water you know the baiting was was coming off all the little spots I found and working out where the fish like to move and where they like to hold it at various times was really working for me um, October was an absolute nightmare I, I you know through various commitments of work and, uh, and family and everything else I only managed to get three quick overnighters in um, and didn't get a didn't get a pickup at all Started to think, you know, chance probably gone for the year because you know it doesn't always fish that well into to winter or so I was told. But then we got a really mild spell in November, and uh, I got down there and I think it was just before bonfire night, and uh, I hooked three fish that session. Um, one I lost unfortunately. Um, one was a uh, thirty-four pound common, so yet another uh, mid thirty common, and um, the the last fish of the session was a, a forty-four pound. Uh, two ounce fish known as a parrot. Now I joined the complex because I knew it had a, a potential of doing a few 40 pound commons so I was really really pleased to, to bank that one you know it was oh, you know I can't really describe to you how happy I was it was it was just one of those things to, to try for so many years to get a 40 pound common and keep falling short you know eight ounces short I've held twice last year and the year before but to finally get one and at those sort of weights was fantastic and it fought like an absolute demon it, it I must have had it on for half an hour, it, it got stuck in about three or four weed beds and as soon as I dragged it out of the weed bed it shot off in a different direction. Um, so it was fantastic to finally land it, it was a, it, it was a good way to, to kind of round the season off a little bit. So yeah, all in all, 2011 season, I, I thought it was going to be a, a bit slow for me with changing jobs and having a baby and everything else, but in, in the few nights that I did, you know, I didn't do as many nights as, as what I normally do, I probably did about half. Um, I still managed to catch quite a few fish and I was really pleased with it, you know. Ended up with six fish o over £35, which um, I can't complain at all, and uh, a PB common. So I was, I was more than happy with those results. And if, if you want to read about anything in, in a bit more depth, I'm writing a diary piece for uh, Big Carp. So if you want to hear about what I've just spoke about or, or see what I'm doing in the future, just, uh, just check that out.